Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, if you have seen the movie Interstellar, or any other sci-fi for that matter, you might be aware of the notion of time dilation happening, happening during uh, near black holes and travelling near the speed of light. This is a staple of science fiction. And it occurred to me that uh, people might be wondering how big that effect is and why that effect happens, why it needs to happen for physics to work. So there is actually a really, really simple derivation that uh, comes from special relativity. Actually, technically, it comes from electrodynamics that uh, the theory of electrodynamics de developed by uh, Hendrik Lorenz and Poincaré. They actually did a lot of the mathematics required for special relativity before Einstein came along and simplified the whole thing into his basic postulates of special relativity. Now, special relativity basically says two things. First, it says that physics is the same everywhere in the universe. Every observer sees physics as the same. And that's not so much a statement of relativity because it's actually a fundamental assumption of everything that we do in physics. Uh, without that, things, you know, astronomy becomes very hard if you imagine the laws of physics are elsewhere. The second one is that the speed of light is constant for everyone, right? No matter what you're doing, how fast you're going, if you see a photon fly by, it is always traveling at the same speed, about 300,000 kilometers per second, approximately. So with these two things in mind, with the fact that there's no special observer, right? There's nobody that has special laws of physics just for them. When there's speed of light is the same to everyone. You have to reconcile these two things and it turns out you can build out the whole of special relativity. So how do we measure time dilation? Well, we have to measure time first. So let's come up with a very simple clock that uses the speed of light. And what we have is two mirrors. Or a mirror and a reflector and a, or a photon source. But we fire a photon all the way across to this mirror and then it bounces back. Right, so this is me as an observer here. And uh, say this is distance d between the two plates. And this is gonna be, there's gonna be a little bit of algebra here but nothing you can't understand with very basic algebra. So the distance here, or the time that it takes, let's call this time one, is equal to d divided by the speed of light, which we will call c. And c, if you remember, I've said is, is approximately, I'm going to put a little approximation line there, 300,000 kilometers per second. A lot of times I see people traveling at 300 kilometers per second in KSP and saying, I'm traveling at the speed of light. No, you're not. You're traveling at 0.1% of it. Anyway, that is for a static observer. If you take this clock and you test it on the Earth, that's how fast it'll move. If, you, if you're if you flying with this thing clock and you're sitting in a spaceship with it, that's the time it'll take, right? But if you watch somebody else fly by on a spaceship with this clock, then they're moving like this through space, right? At speed V, let's call it V. Now the problem is that in the time the beam takes to go here, the mirror has actually moved on, perhaps to there. So the light has to travel that distance. And immediately, you'll notice that that distance is longer than this distance, right? This is, you know, this is basic flat, you know, geometry. This distance is longer, so that implies that an observer watching a clock like this fly by on a spaceship is going to see the clock ticking more slowly. And we can figure out how slowly using very simple mathematics, right? So let's draw this diagram out. We're going to draw it. It's just going to be like a right angle triangle. And we have D here as one side. We have well, we want to know what our time is. So this is traveling at, this is traveling along and the distance is equal to velocity times T2. What well, T2 is whatever that tick is. Similarly, this side is equal to C times T2. Well, this is a right angle triangle and you should all know Pythagoras. If not, it's incredibly simple. It just says that v, uh, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So, Let's fill, fit this in. That says that um, c t c squared t two squared is equal to um, v t two squared v squared t squared plus d squared. Very simple. Okay, 
So we want to solve for this. So we want to get the common factors t2 on this side. So that says that t2 squared times c squared minus v squared is equal to d squared. See, what I've done is I just moved this term over and took out the common factor. So that then says that t2 squared is equal to d2 squared over c squared minus v squared. And that actually tells you immediately the time dilation factor. As v goes up, this time starts to go up as well. Very, very simple. But let's figure this out as a fraction of the original clock speed, right? So what we want to figure out is actually t2 divided by t1. That's what we want to figure out, right? So um, t2 squared over t1 squared, and I'm just going to put a common square value there. We know that t1 is equal to d times c, right? So if we're dividing by it, we need to put c on top. And so you get this d squared over c squared minus v squared times c squared over d squared. And guess what? The d's cancel out. You can take this c and put it down here, and it ends up under here. So your final result is that t squared t2 over v t1 squared is equal to 1 over 1 minus v squared over c squared. Look how simple that equation is. It's like super simple. Now actually this is usually expressed as the gamma factor or the Lorentz uh, factor, which is gamma is that. And what we do is we just say t2 over t1. We take the square root of this. So it's actually the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So you can plug in the value for v as a fraction of the speed of light. All right, so if you if you just uh, say that v squared, uh, sorry, if you just say your velocity is, say, 99% of the speed of light, and you square that, well, okay, you square that, and it's something like, I don't know, I, I can't do the math in my head. I know that to get a factor of 2, then you need about 86%, 87% of the speed of light to get gamma equals 2. So gamma equals 2 implies about... Um, 86.6%, I believe, is the number that I have in my head. So that is the derivation of, uh, of your very simple Lorentz factor. As I said, Lorentz was one of the first guys to actually figure out the mathematics of this, but he was using different postulates. And it turns out that uh, his theory of electrodynamics and special relativity are actually equivalent for almost everything. It's only when you start to treat space-time uh, and curved space-time that works for general relativity, that it's clear that special relativity becomes the better, uh, the better postulate, the better theory, simply due to uh, Occam's razor saying that you know, why would you need a separate set of equations when, uh, yeah, special relativity gives it all for us. Now, you'll also know that uh, you, know, you might also know that it's not just velocity that reduces time, but actually. Being near a sort you're being inside a gravity well will slow things down just by being on the surface of the earth The gravity of the earth is slowing time down for us as well um, If you are near the surface of a black hole time practically stops and the formulation for that actually requires general relativity I can't derive this here and you know everybody that's done actual relativity at school or at a university will know that this derivation is only half of the story. This just happens to get the right result. Uh, there's more complicated ways to derive all of this and you can also get this same Lorentz factor. It is the same factor that affects your mass, your momentum, your uh, length contraction, which is another feature you get. All of this comes back to this really simple to derive equation, which yeah, it's not that hard, right? That's one of the things about special relativity is that actually it just required you to get your head around it. And once you did, the mathematics was actually really, really simple. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Oh yeah, and as for flying safe, I gotta thank my camera girl here who was uh, learning all about relativity apparently. Say hi.